Hello, it's Dr. Darnese. Welcome back in to Dr. Darnese's House of Religion, Magic, and History. Today, we're talking about how Black history is uniquely targeted to be shut down. Y'all have heard, and I've done other videos, right? I made a whole reading list for Black history because I keep saying it's up to us to educate our own. We can no longer rely, as if we ever could, upon, upon schools public schools, private schools, any other schools to teach our history. Now, what do I see in the, in the news? Well, the news tells me that Florida churches are deciding to get together and create a coalition. That's what is it called? 200 churches um, in Florida called Faith, the Faith in Florida Coalition have decided that they are now going take upon themselves to start teaching uh, black history courses in the church because the governor of Florida and many other states, right? Let's not think that this is only happening in Florida, but many other states as well. But in Florida, 200 black churches are taking proactive measures to educate their communities about black Americans, rich and complex history. So I'm just reading, make sure I get the name of this thing right. Um, and I think I might reach out to these people, y'all. But my point in, in bringing this up is I have been saying this. We can no longer rely on anybody else to teach our young people. If it's not going to happen in the schools, it has to happen in our churches and it has to happen in our homes. That means in your home. You need a library. You see every day that Black people and our history are uniquely targeted for the erasure of American history. Because we're a part of American history. But certain folks would have this aspect of American history literally whitewashed. Y'all heard the man, the governor of Florida, y'all heard him say that slavery benefited Black people too. There were textbooks in, in uh, Texas that presented slavery as if it was some sort of indentured servitude and that Black people were happy to do it in exchange for becoming American citizens. It's on, right? It, it's an all-out assault on us. Because think about it. Who else is being told that they can't teach their history in schools? Jewish people? Oh, no. Because they have a mantra, never forget, right? What about Japanese Americans? Do we learn about the Japanese internment? Yeah, we sure do, right? Who else? Oh, that Confederate history. Conservatives want to keep those Confederate statues. They want to keep that history, which is going to be kind of a trick. They put themselves in their own trick bag because how are you going to talk about the Confederacy and what the Confederates were standing up for unless you talk about Southern culture which was based upon slavery. What the Civil War, you know, they argue the Civil War wasn't about slavery. It was about states' rights. Well, states' rights to do what? States' rights to maintain the Southern way of life, which was what? To maintain the Southern economy, which was based upon slavery. That's what I mean. You get yourself in a trick bag when you say, I want to continue to elevate my Confederate heroes and these statues and whatnot. Now I'm for, okay, let's put those statues and things in a museum and put them in context because we're going to tell that story. You're not going to talk about a, a genteel plantation and, and skip over the fact that the plantation functioned because of the labor of enslaved people. Okay. So we are uniquely targeted. And we've been here before. This is a civil rights issue now. You know, just states all across the country are deciding on a daily basis what kind of African-American history they're going to include, if at all. Because like the GOP says, oh, these woke schools and teachers are trying to make our white children feel guilty. These teachings are creating hate. Now, really, teaching about the hate that already existed, teaching about lynching is what caused lynching? 
I know I had somebody write in a comment on video like this I made some time ago. And the person wrote, this is this is the type of video that keeps the racism going. I'm sorry, I'm the one who keeps the racism going because I am talking about the fact that it exists. I am wanting to elevate our history, y'all, continually. As you know, I made a whole reading list. If you didn't get the reading list, I'm going to put the link again um, in the box below. And you can click on that link and go get the list that I put together for you. You just got to give me your email address so that I can send it to you. But this is no games, no jokes. This is a civil rights issue. Um, I wanted to also, um, well, one, that, that's in Florida where these churches are getting together, right? And, and when you think about it, it's always been the black church. That has been our primary way, our, our primary center for, our, for community, right? For better or worse, usually for better, <laughs> mostly for better. It was a primary place for community. And when Black people were leaving the South and going North, migrating North, the place where you knew to go first was the church. That's how you knew how to get your footing in any new city where you were going, right? That's where people went who were illiterate and they learned how to read, right? This We have used the Black church for many, many reasons because we were excluded from so many other parts of society. So now we see the Black church stepping up again, right? For years and years and years, people have said, well, the Black church ain't doing nothing. You know, they're just taking people's money. These ministers are taking people's money and they're not doing anything. So I'm willing to give them a shout out right, right now for um, picking up this baton and saying, you know, we're not going to have this. We're, we're just not going to have this. Um, and also this story about how this is becoming an underground railroad issue because in certain states, you can't teach it. We see teachers and librarians literally being punished. So for other people who are willing to take up the mantle of teaching it in public spaces, it's like we create an underground railroad in order for our history not to be erased. Okay, so then in um, Pennsylvania, there's a minister also there who is looking for uh, black educators to help them put together a program. So I need to probably be reaching out to these people myself, probably, or at least getting together some other um, black teachers and professors I know, because we can be helping out. Um, yeah, the GOP is saying that we are creating, I have to just revisit that. The GOP says that we are the ones who are preaching the hate. We are the ones making white children feel uncomfortable in schools. We are teaching our history and it is leading to black teachers actually being fired off their jobs. Uh, librarians, white, black, whatever, librarians being fired off their job. Okay. Um, so I am looking now at uh, this group in Jacksonville, Florida, Black historians uh, performing a banned book readout, a banned book readout, because they are saying that we will not be silent. And so if we can't get this in schools, we're going to have a readout in a public park. We are going to teach our history by any means necessary. Where we know that from? By any means necessary, right? Um, and so in Jacksonville, uh, Florida, there's a readout. I'm all about it, yay. <laughs> so what do I wanna say? My point in this video, if it's not already clear, educate your own. It is long past time for black people to be like, oh, the school should be doing this. The churches should be doing this. Yay, if the churches are going to do it. Yay, if you're going to have, you know, some activists in your city or whatever doing some things. But also understand these are your children, your grandchildren will become your great grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews. The matter is very serious. So you need to know if you don't know now, you don't know yourself. I got some books on that list for you. I got some books for uh, children. Um, what did I just hear? Somebody was a teacher. Remember Ta-Nehisi Coates' book, Between the World and Me? Ta-Nehisi Coates? That's on the list. Ta-Nehisi Coates, Between the World and Me. Well, some teacher got in trouble for reading from it. She just read from it. It wasn't even like assigned. 
So now we have what, you know, students in the classroom who are who are complaining and saying, we were made to feel uncomfortable because our teacher read something about race in class. Now, I don't know. Did y'all ever have to read in school? I'm just having a flashback right now. When I was like, I want to say a sophomore or junior in school, uh, we were reading in my English class. We were reading Huckleberry Finn. And when it comes time to read the black characters dialect, Jim, right? Or what do they call them? N-word Jim. Did y'all read that? Huckleberry Finn? <laughs> And the teacher, my white teacher, picked black students to read that part. Now, you know, if you remember, that was in the dialect. So now here we are, you know, about, what, 15 years old? Only two or three of us in the classroom because this was AP American literature. And so we were, I don't know, again, a handful of black students in that class. And we were picked out to read the part of N-word Jim. So I'm remembering that. And I remember saying, I'm not going to read it. I'm not reading it. And a friend of mine, another black girl, she read it, but she read it in regular English. She didn't go into the dialect. And the teacher kind of looked at her like she really expected her to do the dialect. Nobody thought, oh, that makes black children uncomfortable. Oh, having to hear about all of this stuff that has happened to black people for centuries. None of nobody cares that makes you uncomfortable. I think about Native American children. How uncomfortable are they? So when we say Black Lives Matter, we got to say Black Lives Matter. All right. That is it for now. Get your list. If you did not get that Black Studies reading list, um, I created that what, over the summer. Um, and so you can have your very own. It's at least a starting point um, on Patreon. You can support me there. Um, well, you can help us get to where we're going to have our own study group. Because what I had announced, if you want a study group, then, you know, you got to support it on Patreon. I can't do it, you know, with no support. So uh, you can look on Patreon and find a link there. You can also, if you don't have time, like, ah, time or class. Okay, well, then just support the channel. If you find that this is helpful information to you, if you want to share it with other people, I appreciate that as well. But, you know, support the channel. And that is it. Bye for now.